I can't believe that it's just the very first part of the series. Unlike the full art scan, the half art scan shows different results depending on the byte acquisition area. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Jenny and I'm a part of education team at Medit. Nice to meet you everyone. Today we have Dr. Kim, who is a master in this workflow, especially with Medit apps and everything about prosthetic works. Thank you for being here, Dr. Kim. Hi, Jenny, and welcome everyone. Thank you for inviting me over this webinar again. I'm back with a huge series of webinars. The main topic is about how to reduce chat time, and today will be the very opening of the first speech. I'm very excited to start over. Yeah, I think everybody will be very interested about today's topic, and it is the very first day of the starting the huge series. I heard that the series consists of five parts, right? Yes, I know all the dentists are concerned about reduced chair time, so I segmented all the issue with five factors, starting from scanning issue and designing, building, printing, and crown setting. And in each series, I'm going to deal with errors and solutions for each factor. And today's topic is focused on scanning issues. Wow, it will be really interesting for everyone. As Dr. Kim has mentioned, the today's topic will be how to reduce chair time, minimizing a loser adjustment, part one. Error from scanning and solution. Okay, so before we begin, I would like to remind you all that this video has been pre-recorded. So we've already collected all the questions through the email in advance. So we will cover those questions today. And while watching the webinars, if you have any questions or if you have any feedback, please feel free to contact us at and medit.com. And if you would like to watch the previous webinars, you can visit our YouTube channel. And we also have an official training platform, which is Medit Academy. So you can utilize our medit platform to enhance your knowledge regarding this event history. Okay, so shall we begin, doctor? In this series, we will walk you through the errors that occur at each stage of a zirconia crown treatment. Today, we will start with the first part, the intraoral scanner. We will cover the five areas needed to create a zirconia crown. This is my intraoral scan workflow. I do preoperative scan, intraocular scan, and mandibular movement recording for before tooth preparation. After preparation, I scan the abutment teeth and make sure the amount of removal is sufficient. If you are doing things differently than I am, you might want to know the following. Why do preoperative scans? The difference between full and half arch scan. How to scan an abutment tooth? Checklist before finalizing scan. Let's take a look at them one by one. First, let's talk about preoperative scans. Certainly, when referring to the fabrication of dental crowns, a preoperative scan often implies using digital impressions or scans of the patient's oral environment before the preparation. Here are the reasons why a preoperative scan is crucial in the creation of dental crowns. Of these, the one that is relevant to today's lesson is the ability to utilize the intercrucial relationship information prior to tooth preparation to create a well-fitting crown as a result. The key will be whether or not there is a vertical problem with the bite when the teeth are prepared. You may have already experienced that the more abutment you prepare, the more likely you are to have a low or high bite. I found a paper on this, which I will share with you on the next page. This article investigates 
the impact of posterior occlusal support on condylar position in the jaw. The study involved 23 participants who were provided with occlusal adjusted splint that covered all teeth from the second mandibular molar on the right to the left side. The participants were then measured for vertical and horizontal condylar position using an ultrasonic motion analyzer. The splints were gradually shortened and measurements were repeated at each stage. Let's explain this table. The bottom group is the number of posterior teeth that have had their bite removed. They increase towards the light. The bark wrap presents the change in vertical height of the condyle. Of the four bark wraps in each group, the first and third are for the removed right side, and the second and fourth are for the contralateral left side. On the left, there is no significant change, while on the right, you have seen that the change in position of the condyle increases as the number of the removable posterior teeth increases. It's around 0.342 teeth and 0.943 or more. The results show that the loss of posterior occlusal support led to cranial condyle movement, even with low clenching force. This suggests that performing an occlusal scan after preparing two or more posterior teeth may result in a lower prosthetic outcome. First key point. If an interocclusal scan is taken after crown preparation, there may be a problem with the vertical relationship between the arches. So, it makes sense to make an interocclusal scan prior to tooth preparation. Second, is there a difference in occlusion between full and half arch scan? Yes. Here are some reasons why errors might occur when scanning. It tends to reason that the longer the scan span, the longer the error. Therefore, a full arch scan is more likely to have data deformation than a half arch scan. For this reason, half arch scans have been recommended for single unit restorations. Let's look at the next article together. Purpose of this study is to assess the accuracy and producibility of a virtual interocclusal restoration procedure. This paper shows two things. First, where to scan when only one bite scan is available. The second is whether a full arch or half arch scan is advantageous. Group 1 to 3 are full arch scans aligned by anterior left and right interocrucial scans. Group 4, 5, 6 are half arch scans and sorted by anterior, posterior, and quadrant interocrucial scans. The best result was group 5, half arch scan with posterior interocrucial scan. The results of this paper are as follows. There is difference in occlusal contact obtained from interocclusal scans in different segments of dental arches, more obvious in full arch scans. Multiple virtual interocclusal records may be needed for full arch scans to reduce tilting effect. Half arch scans provide the most accurate occlusal representation for a single unit cases. But this paper has the following limitations. First, a single interocrucial record. Second, experiment on the model. So I did some more experimentation with the Medit Interoral Scanner. Our three step members scanned each other under the following conditions. A full arch scan and two interocrucial records were performed. The first group scanned the posterior buccal side only. The second group did the posterior buccal and occlusal surfaces. The third group did the quadrant buccal only. There is no difference between the three groups. 
this was a common and consistent observation across all three. We can conclude that aligning the full arch scan with two interocclusal records gives consistent results. The half arch scan used one interocclusal record. The interocclusal scan position is the same as before. Superimpositioning the full arch scan data on the half arch scan made it possible to compare the occlusal context of the contralateral occlusion caused by tilting. Unlike the full arch scan, the half arch scan shows different results depending on the bite acquisition area. However, looking at the scanned right half, it's hard to see much difference in the occlusal context. The occlusal alignment of half arch scan seemed to be the reason it was clinically acceptable despite the tilting. Let's watch a video comparing the fit of a crown made with full and half arch scan data. First, I fabricated a crown from the full arch scan and tried it on. I checked the fit to be excellent with no missing shim star. The second is a crown made from a half arch scan. At the first molar site, you can see that the shim stack is coming out slowly. This is the occlusal context of the two crowns. In the future, I will collect more clinical cases comparing full arch scan to half arch scans and share them as they become meaningful. The second key point, full arch scan with two interocclusal records give consistent results. When using a half arch scan, it is useful to make sure that the occlusal alignment matches the occlusal context. We've done well with half arch scan so far, so they are clinically useful but full arch scans are likely to be even better. Third, we will discuss possible errors in the abutment scan. In order to scan the abutment teeth, the tooth area must be cut out. It was recommended that you lock and scan, as additional scans could alter the existing data. I experimented with removing only the abutment teeth, removing both the gums and the abutment teeth, or removing the entire posterior region. This was done five times in each of the six groups. First, when only the tooth was removed, locked, and further scanned, little deformation was observed. Second, there was no deformation when the teeth were cut out and scanned further without locking. Third, the tooth and gums were removed, locked, and further scanned with little deformation in the abutment area and some in the gums. Fourth, the teeth and gums were removed and further scanned without locking with similar result to the locked case. Fifth, when the posterior region was removed, locked, and further scanned, deformation was observed up to the tooth area. Sixth, I removed all the posterior region and did additional scans without locking, and the results were similarly bad to the locked case. It seemed that locking it is no longer important. Avoid erasing the entire posterior. One last topic. What you need to do is make a habit of checking the following things before you finish the scan and the patient goes. Let's go through them one by one. Hold in critical areas such as abutment and contact points as shown on the left are not allowed. Hold in areas like the right are acceptable. Do not scan while contaminated with blood and saliva. After scanning the abutment, it is important to check for undercut. This can be easily checked by using the preparation review function. 
you can verify that the preparation is thick enough for the proper strength of zirconia ground in the following ways. It is also very important to make sure that the shape of the adjacent surfaces is correct. If you miss this, you may have to remake the prosthesis. You should also check for moving teeth. You will end up with a prosthesis that doesn't fit by or get food stuck easily. This study used a data trimming strategy to improve the accuracy of bite restoration scans in the presence of Fremitos. This strategy involved trimming or excluding data from the scanned area around the Fremitos teeth. By removing the mobility caused by Fremitos, the accuracy of the bite restoration scans could be enhanced. Taking a scan of occlusal contact will help you verify that bite alignment is correct. Let's wrap up today's lesson. Do a pre-operative scan. The occlusion on a full RG scan is highly reproducible. When using a half RG scan, it is helpful to make sure that the occlusal alignment matches the occlusal contact. When scanning abutments, it is recommended that you only cut out the prepared teeth as possible. Get in the habit of going through the checklist before finalizing the scan. Thank you for sharing all your tips with us, Dr. Kim. I can't believe that it's just the very first part of the series, and I'm very excited about the next series as well. Thank you so much. I hope the webinar was helpful for you all. If you have any questions, please let me know through the email. Yeah, please feel free to contact us at meditedit and medit.com. And since this webinar has been pre-recorded, so we've already got some questions to cover today. So let's move on to the Q&A session. Question number one. Is there a difference in scanning with white light and blue light mode? Yes, there were two light modes available in the magic scanner. Light mode can be selected based on the smoothness of the surface. In some cases, when there are highly polished prosthetic surfaces such as zirconia or metal, it is recommended to set the light mode from blue to white before scanning. The reason for this is that in order to create a white LED, blue, red, and green are mixed together using various wavelengths of LEDs. This is said to be more advantageous for scanning objects with shiny surfaces. You can think of it as similar to scanning from various angles to scan more accurately. Okay, thank you for answering that. Question number two. Do you have any clinical tips when you find the marginal area is unclear due to prep issues or deep surfaces, etc.? To perform a same-day scan, it is important to minimize bleeding and have good control over the soft tissue. First, to reduce bleeding, placing a gingival coat and using a fine diamond ball for tooth preparation can be helpful. To hemostasis, you can use an electric coatery or appropriate blood hemostatic agent. Scanning should be done in blood-free and saliva-free environment. If the area is deep and narrow and difficult to access, taking a sectional impression and joining them together is also possible. When the matting is unclear, using a monochrome mode or curvature display mode can help to find a clear margin. Despite this effort, if the margin remains unclear, it is recommended to fabricate a temporal restoration and allow for a healing period before rescanning. Okay, question number three. Do you recommend scanning the full arch or just a partial scan for a single crop? And why did you choose one? 
which I had mentioned in the lecture to obtain meaningful occlusal information to reduce occlusal adjustment, it is best to perform a full arch scan, even in the case of a single crown. As an alternative, when scanning a half arch, I suggest to align the scan data by including not only the lateral surface, but also the occlusal surface. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, thank you for sharing all your tips with us today. That's all about it for today. So you'll be able to watch this webinar on our YouTube channel and Medit Academy once it's completed. Thank you for being here, Dr. Kim. Thanks everyone for joining us today. Hope to see you at our next webinar. Bye. Bye.